Hi, my name is Zach, and in this video, I'm going to show you the basics of using virtual amplification with an electric guitar in a digital audio workstation or DAW. Initial setup. You will need the following equipment and gear. Firstly, you'll need a guitar, which is connected to an audio interface, which is in turn connected to a computer with a DAW installed. And finally, you'll need either headphones or studio monitors to hear what you're doing. Now, there are hundreds of virtual amps, pedals and cabinet plugins available. Some are free and others cost money. I recommend trying as many as possible to see the ones you like. However, for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to be using the following plugins, which are free. I'm going to be using Ignite Amp's Emissary Amp and their cabinet plugin. I'm going to be using TSE Audio's Tube Screamer pedal. And finally, I'll be using Voxengo's Old School Reverb. Links are included in the description. Make sure the gain on your audio interface isn't too high. If you're not sure, start with something conservative and then increase it. Also make sure that you've selected instrument and not line in. Finally, if you have a high Z input, I certainly recommend that for recording guitar. Setting up the door. I'll be using Reaper for this tutorial. However, this is possible in any door where you can record audio and that can use audio plugins. I won't be going into setting up drivers, inputs or outputs as that's a complex subject in itself and it would take too long. If you are having difficulty, I recommend going to Reddit or a relevant forum and seeking help there. Now our aim is to create a basic guitar track with which we can record and also has an effect on it. First off, we insert a new track. I'm going to call it Guitar Amp 1. Remember to set monitoring on and set the appropriate channel for recording. In my case, my guitar's DI, or direct input, is channel 2. Then we insert another track. I'm going to call it Guitar FX. We don't have to change the input or turn monitoring on for this track. Now, let's just ignore the second track and focus on the first. The signal chain in the virtual world works essentially the same as the real world. The guitar signal first goes into a pedal, our TSE 808, and then it goes into an amp, for us, the emissary. If you play through the plugin now, it will sound like this. Like a real amp, the signal needs to go through a speaker, in our case, a cabinet VST and an impulse response, or IR. So now we load up Nadir. Now, Nadir 2.0 comes with some pre-installed IRs, which is great as you can get started right away. However, be aware that, as with the real thing, your choice of cabinet can affect your tone quite heavily. You can find IRs both for free or buy them from companies like Ownhammer or Redwire. And finally, we should be ready to make some noise. We arm the guitar track and should be able to hear ourselves playing. Remember to double check the monitoring options in your door and on your interface. Okay, everything seems to be working. Fantastic. I recommend aiming for a signal 
of about minus 12 dB when you're playing at your loudest. This isn't an official rule, it's just a very safe guideline that will help you in the long run, especially with gain staging, which I'm not going to go into. Effects. Now we're going to move on to adding an effect to the guitar track we just created. You could just add a plugin or even a real pedal to the logical place in the chain, and that's fine. However, in this video, I'm going to show you a different method, which you may or may not know. First, we need to route the audio from the guitar track into our effects track. In my door, I do it like this. Very easy. Next, we will load the effect plugin into the FX channel. I'm going to load in Voxengo's Old School Verb, which is a reverb plugin. No matter which effect you choose, you will want to pay attention to the wet and dry settings of each plugin. As we are already hearing the dry or unprocessed signal from the main guitar channel, we don't need to hear it from the FX channel. For this reason, turn the effects to 100% wet or disable the dry, depending upon the plugin. Okay, it works. Now you can play with the reverb plugin or you can blend the signals together in any way you want, depending upon what you need. You can also mute the reverb channel at any time. The concepts of channels sending and receiving signals are commonly used when working with music digitally. Just one advantage of this method is that I can process the affected signal without affecting the dry guitar signal. For example, I want to cut some mud out of the reverb, but I don't want to lose those frequencies in the main guitar. With this method, this is easily done. Pay attention to the send settings too. Most doors enable you to select when you send the signal. Is it before effects, after effects, after the channel fader? That's up to you and what you want to go for. Well, that about wraps up the video. Thank you for watching and I hope it's helped you. Feel free to leave a question or comment.